Retreat for heads of ministries, agencies, and parastatals in Niger State ends. Participants say establishment of grazing reserves remain priority when in the state. When issues come up, we won't be waiting for this patch of police from the federal capital to the state. Nigerians lend voice to establishment of state police as a way out of security challenge. Federal government inaugurates 85 kilowatts solar powered mini grid in Ogun State under its public private partnership. Hello, a very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us on NTA Network News. I am Ruth Benamisia. Also, reading with me tonight from our Lagos studios is Demola Adeoye. And Diba Barry Mweke joins us from Port Harcourt, while in Jos, Caleb Guchin is also standing by. The Buhari administration has from takeoff in 2015 given top priority to combating insecurity in the country. From the Boko Haram insurgency to crises in various parts of the country, resulting in loss of lives and property, which the government has resolved to tackle head on. As part of the efforts, the Senate of the Federal Republic has just concluded a security summit. National Assembly correspondent Dennis Adegunloye gives us this background report. The killings in parts of Nigeria have brought to the fore issues in the country's political, economic and social climate that government has tirelessly worked to address, and the legislature on its own part took swift action in finding lasting solutions to the problems. With the setting up of an ad hoc committee on security infrastructure in Nigeria, chaired by the Senate leader, Ahmed Lawan. Our assignment is to review both the architecture and the infrastructure to look at making our security uh, institutions effective and efficient and potent as individual institutions as well as when they cooperate and partner uh, in operations. So what Nigerians should expect at the end of our assignment and approval of the Senate on our recommendations would be that our security institutions will be better, that citizens, Nigerians, should expect to be protected and skewered more efficiently and effectively by the security institutions. The Inspector General of Police was before the Joint Committee on Police Affairs and National Intelligence and Security to give an update on the strategy adopted by the force and of course in synergy with other law enforcement agencies to quell the violence and successes and constraints therein in combating the situation with particular emphasis on operations in those highly volatile areas of the country. The Senate had urged the Inspector General of Police to within 14 days arrest and investigate the perpetrators of this act. The IGP will be requested to tell us what has done so far to comply with these Senate directives. And I met many stakeholders and all these major stakeholders made some submissions during my visit. And these are some of the things that form the backlog of the uh, narrative I want to uh, give to the Senate committee now. And the just concluded National Security Summit convened by the Senate brought together the executive, the legislature, military chiefs, the inspector general of police and other critical stakeholders in an unprecedented gathering to deliberate on the issues and to proffer sustained solutions. Dennis at Digunlui, NTA News. Following the public call by Vice President Yemio Shimbajo for the establishment of state police in the country as a possible solution to some of Nigeria's security challenges, some Nigerians have been speaking on its merits and possible downsides. John Yaku tells us more. 
For some time now, there have been calls for the establishment of state police as it operates in some other countries. Now that the federal government believes that the state police will further address the security challenges in the country, a cross-section of Nigerians support this step but call for regulation to check excesses. If state police can do better, then I am by the idea. The state police, they are the people around the state, they know the in and out of every corner in the state. When issues come up, we won't be waiting for this patch of police from the federal capital to the state. My only fear about state police is we will be hijacked by the state governors. As long as the state government with local government council will respect the constitution of the Federal Re Re Republic of Nigeria based on law and order. The vice president at the National Assembly Security Summit canvassed the creation of state police to tackle security issues in the country. In Abuja, John Yaku, NTA News. Now, joining us to take a look at the matters arising from National Assembly Security Summit is the Senate Majority Leader, Ahmed Lawan. Distinguished Senator, thanks for joining us. Good evening. Bruce. You've had a very busy, um, you've had a very busy two days and um, so many solutions proffered back and forth. Yeah. Has the other Committee on Security Infrastructure identified any root causes of the unrest witnessed in recent times all across the nation? Actually, the, the summit is a two-day uh, summit. Yesterday, the 8th of uh, February, mm. and the 12th of February, that will be Monday. And that will be the day we'll conclude the, the summit itself before we go back to the Senate and present our report and then take resolutions and forward to the executive for implementation. So we have been listening to uh, stakeholders. We had a session with... Uh, of course, Vice President opening the, the summit itself, uh, declaring it open, and uh, presentations were made uh, yesterday and discussions were held. Uh, Monday, by the grace of God, uh, we expect that our governors will be present and, of course, as chief security officers of their various states, we should be able to hear from them their uh, stories about what is going on as far as the security situation in their various states uh, is concerned. So we haven't concluded yet, but we have gotten a lot of information regarding uh, some of the causes and uh, the kind of actions that we need to take to ensure that we, we, we put a stop to these senseless and massive killings that we are experiencing across the country. Well, from, uh, from the reports uh, that our, our reporters uh, brought in and the Vox Pop, uh, a lot of people found very interesting the vice president's position on, um, on state police. Oh, yeah, what's yeah. the Senate going to to take from this? Because I, I think it made a lot of um, uh, ripples, well, as it this, were. This debate of establishing state police has been going on for a very long time. I'm happy that the Vice President uh, uh, spoke about it yesterday at the opening ceremony. And uh, for us in the Senate, it's one of those things that we have to take on board. We go back. We will organize a um, public hearing in some various, in various parts of the country, uh, in the six geopolitical zones, to hear more what people feel we should do to enhance the effectiveness and efficiency of uh, uh, security institutions. So we are taking this on board, and I'm sure we'll hear more of uh, the arguments for and against state police and even community policing. Actually, the Vice President added by saying we should also be looking at community policing. And it's one idea that I'm sure Nigerians will also take on board and, and, and argue or debate about it, and that will help the Senate in coming to a conclusion uh, at the end of our exercise. Uh, Senate Lawan, um, I, I don't know. Is, is this summit going to be just a one-off, or do you plan to... Um, do it, you know, once in a while, intermittently? Well, the summit uh, has been organized by the Ad Hoc Committee on Review of Security Infrastructure, uh, set up by the Senate as a result of the various uh, security uh, crises across the country. And our main mandate, actually, is to come up with ways and means of ensuring that our security institutions operate optimally that we are able to protect Nigerians, that lives should matter in this country, that the property of citizens are protected. And what that means 
is suggesting or recommending to the Senate what type of institutions actually do we have to have? Do we now reform our police properly before we fund them? Or do we actually need some of the institutions that we have today? Uh, or we match them with some others? We know our military is overstretched. A lot of times they do police work. Should we continue with that? Or what do we do in the interim? What do we do in the long term to ensure that the military, for example, remains professional and only deals with issues that are purely theirs? The police does what is its own. And then if there is an intermediary force of some sort that exists, or we may suggest, let that intermediary force take some of the responsibility that today you push away from police uh, to, to the military. At the end of the day, we want to see the structures of our security institutions properly uh, put in place and then funding. Because I don't want to fall into the temptation of saying our issue regarding pol uh, policing of Nigeria or the security situation is simply not funding the institutions properly. No, we need to be sure that when we put our funds there, the funds actually are used prudently and effectively. And you have to have uh, structures that will support that. So we have to look at the structures, and we are not going to do this alone. We are in partnership, we are in, 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 in consultation and cooperation with the executive of government. And you could see that the summit itself, even though organized by the Senate, was declared open by the vice president Excellent. Uh, in place of the president. And this is what we want, that the two arms of government, the executive and the legislature, to always walk this kind of path because at the end of the day, the outcome should be something that will be useful, will be productive, will be operational, and workable at the end of the day for the executive to implement. And Wonderful. we're making progress. Wonderful. That's a, a very hopeful place yes. to stop it. We hope you come back again. Distinguished Senate uh, Majority Leader Ahmed Lawan, thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you very much. Moving on now, the International Criminal Police Organization, Interpol, is seeking improved support and cooperation from Nigeria in an effort to achieve its mandate of checking crime across member states of the world. Victor Azu reports that the first port of call of the delegation, led by Secretary General Jorgen Stock, was a visit to the Minister of the Interior, Abdul Rahman Dambazo. Accompanied by officials of the Interpol, the Secretary General Jorgen Stock lauded Nigeria's support to the organization through the years. He noted Nigeria's current security challenges and solicited further cooperation to enable the organization play its role as the only global policing organization. What we try to build uh, is what I would like to call a global early warning system that supports our member countries in identifying criminal activity, in making sure that uh, criminals, when they travel, are dismantled. Minister of Interior Abdul Rahman Dambazao, while congratulating the 58-year-old German on his appointment, pledged Nigeria's continued support, especially as it will help curb the proliferation of firearms in the country. We will work very, very closely with you to ensure success in what we are pursuing. The delegation also visited the Nigerian Police Force Headquarters and Chairman of the EFCC, where he lauded the federal government's efforts at tackling corruption. There is need for us to collaborate because uh, people take money and, and go and hide them abroad. These areas of cooperation have been assisting us a lot. The Interpol currently has a membership of 192 countries, including Nigeria. In Abuja, Victor Azu, NTA News. Governor Yahya Bello of Kogi State has reacted to the position of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Nigeria on the performance of the Buhari administration in addressing critical national issues, describing it as unfair and baseless. The governor, who spoke to State House correspondents, urged Nigerians to keep faith with the governing APC for genuine national development and prosperity. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo reports. Members of the Catholic Bishops Conference of Nigeria, who were in the State House on Thursday, alleged that there is anger in the land over certain actions and inactions of the present administration so far, especially on security and economic matters. But the Kogi State Governor Yaya Bello feels otherwise. The question is who are these categories of Nigerians that are angry? Of course, those that looted 
country dry and benefiting from these crimes and criminality will be angry, and they are Nigerians. If you look at it critically, the, 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 the farmers are happy. Those that have real job are happy because the economy is improving. In no time, we come out of recession. Our foreign reserve is increasing. I want to urge Nigerians to continue to appreciate Mr. President, appreciate him, pray for him, for the good work that he has started to complete it so that Nigeria will be out of the woods. The governor also reacted to the plan by the National Assembly to change the sequence of the forthcoming general elections. They have the choice to make. And they've made a choice that the goodwill of Mr. President should not rub on the bad ones to return them back. Whichever order it comes, this general, coming general election, I can assure you that Mr. President will win landslide. For the Senate leader, Ahmed Ibrahim Lawan, who was also in the State House, the appointment of Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu by the President to reconcile aggrieved members of the APC family is a worthy initiative. APC is plagued by some internal uh, issues, and I believe that these are issues that are surmountable. Uh, the Tinubu Committee will definitely add value into reconciling uh, the, the warring size, so, so to speak. And I believe that as a family, we should be able to come out uh, very much more united than we were before. Senator Lawan also applauded the synergy between the executive and the legislature on national security, as demonstrated at the ongoing security summit organized by the National Assembly. That was a typical and excellent example of collaboration, cooperation, and partnership between the executive and the legislature. And we, we are so happy that uh, this partnership is working. Resolutions on the best way forward are expected at the end of the summit, which continues on Monday. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. You're watching NTA Network News. We'll take a break now and we shall return shortly. Don't go away. You're welcome back. Participants at a two-day retreat organized for heads of ministries, agencies, and parastatals in Niger State say security, good governance, effective communication, and establishment of grazing reserves remain priorities in the state. Alain Kojo reports that they stated this at the end of, a, of the training which took place in Abuja. These are heads of ministries and agencies in Niger State. The decision they will take at this retreat is that which will enhance governance as well as tackle the challenges of insecurity in the state. Niger State Governor Abubakar Sani Bello, who said one of the things they are looking at is how to develop pasture, added that the Ministry of Agriculture has been directed to find the right grass to grow. I believe once we complete this process, we'll be ready to accommodate a lot of the headsmen within the country and hopefully it will address some of the issues between farmers and headsmen in other states. After two days of brainstorming, the participants say they are better equipped on innovative ways of addressing challenges that pose constraint to governance and retreated continued synergy with security agencies. From time to time we review what we are doing. We've already set a goal for ourselves as we are living here. Reports at the training will be submitted to the Niger State Council for implementation. Online Kaujo, NTA News. Following that, please welcome uh, to our NTA Network News studios the uh, governor of uh, Niger State, Alhaji Abubakar Sani Bello. Your Excellency, you're welcome to our studios. Thank you very much. Um, now, your government's retreat, this uh, two day retreat, focused on good governance. And it, um, from the report we heard, it gave uh, a good chunk of the time to uh, security issues. Well, yeah. how has your state been so far in terms of security? Uh, Niger State has been uh, relatively quiet uh, at the moment. Um, I mean, we've had our challenges in the past um, with cattle rustlers and um, kidnapp kidnappers. But uh, thank God we have um, addressed uh, most of these issues uh, to a reasonable level. So um, uh, we, we in collaboration, and I must commend Mr. President at this moment, the service chiefs, the IG, for all the support. It has been, re it has been really difficult, but um, I, think, um, uh, I think it's quite uh, safe right now. 
somehow it seems that your your government has been in the forefront of uh, the grazing reserve uh, program, giving it all the support um, uh, you can. Um, how is that? How is that coming along, though? Well, the grazing reserves, like I said uh, during the retreat, um, we have uh, over 20 grazing reserves. Um, even though only two have been gazetted, the one in Bobi, which is about 30,000 hectares, and the one in Irin, which is about uh, 14,000 hectares. Uh, at the moment, we're, we're looking at improving the facilities in, in, in the two in the reserves. In the, reserves. Mm. the other ones that have not been gazetted um, uh, over time due to uh, increase in uh, population, new communities have been uh, encroached upon. Uh, I doubt uh, if we can displace all the communities within those reserves, but what we'll do, we'll try and salvage uh, what's left of it and see how we can uh, provide facilities so that we add more reserves. Well, already you have 20. Any, any serious complaints from, from people about, you know, taking out these uh, portions of land just for uh, grazing? Yes, naturally. Any challenges as yes, such? Not, like I said, um, new, new settlements have developed within those reserves. Okay. And um, uh, we, 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 I, I don't think we should displace them, but what we can do, we can uh, salvage what's left of it and um, hopefully still uh, maintain the communities within the reserves. Uh, I mean, Niger is almost 9 million hectares of land, so... Oh, yeah. So, uh, so you mean, <laughs> it shouldn't be too much of a problem. I, I don't think. <laughs> now I, I, I don't <laughs> think. I, I think the next few, once if we work very hard, in the next few months, we should be able to accommodate as many headsmen as possible. Uh, reports reaching us say, by the way, that um, your state is the only one that has an office, an office designated for nomadic affairs. And you, you have a, a DG in, oh, yes. in charge of that. Yes, we have a DG uh, in charge of nomadic affairs, and that has really helped. Um, uh, that office interfaces between the, the, the Fulani headsmen and the farmers and once there are issues they provide uh, on the spot solution to those issues oh. and um, they work 24-7. Uh, they're all over the state as large as the state is and we have seen uh, uh, tremendous Remarkable. progress. Remarkable. Yes, mm. yes. It's, it's, mm. been, it's, been, it's been wonderful. Uh, the office has been very effective and um, hopefully we may expand it and even give you more support. Well, maybe some of your colleagues could come and take a, borrow a leaf. Yeah, sure. From um, I, hope, I, hope, I hope those ones that have um, similar challenges, can, they're, they're free to come and have a look and uh, see if they can uh, possibly do what we are doing or even do better. So, uh, but you know, states are different, the people are different. So Absolutely. what works in Niger might not work in uh, other states, but basically it's the same problem between farmers and headsmen, and um, this problem will continue if we if we don't tackle it and address it now. Excellent, Mr. Governor. Thank you so much for thank joining us much. tonight. Thank you. Very thank much. you. Moving on now, the presidential investigation panel set up to review compliance with human rights obligations and rules of engagement by the Nigerian Armed Forces in local conflicts and insurgencies has submitted its report to Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo in Abuja. Now, our State House correspondent, Gideon Onifade, witnessed this and brings us the details. In with its pledge at inauguration to carry out a thorough work, the panel had visited the six geopolitical zones of the country, listened to petitions from the people, and heard responses from the three arms of the armed forces, the details which are contained in the main report of the panel. Excellent. There were two broad recommendations for the consideration of the federal government made by the panel. Indeed, the Nigerian army is increasingly taking on the role of policing many communities across Nigeria. It is therefore important and pra that practical steps be taken to make the Nigerian police more professional in fulfilling their constitutional role of providing security to all Nigerians, irrespective of financial status, ethnicity, gender, or religious inclination. Furthermore, Your Excellency, sir, we also wish to stress that building a culture of respect for human rights and accountability depends largely not only on existing laws, but on a strong and well-funded, equipped, and empowered National Human Rights Commission. The chairman of the panel, Justice Biobele Abraham Judgewill, 
of the Court of Appeal in his remark said virtually all the communities visited agreed to the need for the presence of military for protection against militants, insurgents, and all those making life uncomfortable for them. The Vice President says details of the report would be made public in due course. One thing that is certain is that um, whatever it is, whatever the findings are, they, not only will they be uh, referred, of course, to the necessary uh, or to the relevant agencies, but also to the military, especially where there is a need for disciplinary action or for any type of action. They'll be, certainly be referred to uh, the military for uh, action. And if there is a need for the civil authorities or the courts to take action, that will also be done. And where praise or where uh, there is a need to commend, we will also uh, do so. This investigation panel was instituted in August 2017. In the State House, Jide Onifade, NTA News. President Muhammad Buhari has restated the commitment of his administration towards ensuring the welfare, health, and security needs of Nigerian pilgrims on the journey of faith in Saudi Arabia. This was when the Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, Khadija Buka Ibrahim, and the Chairman of the National Hajj Commission, Abdullahi Mukhtar, briefed him on Nigeria's approved quota for the 2018 Hajj operation. Under the arrangement, 95,000 slots have been allocated to the country to be shared among the state pilgrims welfare boards and the agencies, as well as the private tour operators. Chairman of the Hajj Commission told Newsman that their discussions also centered on the new policies introduced by Saudi authorities for the forthcoming Hajj exercise. 75 for the states. Uh, Pilgrims, that is those that will be registered under state pilgrims welfare board and agencies, and 20,000 will be allocated to approved license to our operators. And Mr. President has assured us of his commitment and that of the government in ensuring that pilgrims uh, attend to and their welfare and security will continue to be guaranteed by the government. The president, he said, is working on the challenges currently being faced by intending Umrah pilgrims following the introduction of biometrics capture and promised that the federal government will do everything it can to address the problems. The commission will soon commence sensitization and town hall meetings across the country on the issues of VATs and biometrics in line with the new Saudi policy. President Muhammad Buhari has commenced the process of ensuring judges and justices recommended by the National Judiciary Council, NJC, for appointments into various courts are fit to function as judicial officers. A statement to this effect by the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Garba Shehu, says the President's position is in furtherance of the executive powers vested in him under Section 5 of the 1999 Constitution, which allows him, as the appointing authority, to exercise the same reasonably. The statement assures Nigerians that the president will issue his approval as soon as the process of the background verification is completed. Following recommendations from the NJC, President Muhammadu Buhari has approved the compulsory retirement of Honorable Justice AFA Ademola of the Abuja Division of the Federal High Court and the dismissal of Honorable Justice O.O. Tokode of the Benin Division of the Federal High Court. A statement to this effect by the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Shehu Garba, says disciplinary action on the two justices are in pursuance of Section 292 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended. Justice O.O. Tokode is also to refund all salaries and allowances earned illegally from 2nd December 2015 
when he was sworn in as a judge of the Federal High Court to date. The president urged judicial officers to be alive to their responsibilities and eschew corruption in the discharge of their duties. The special task force set up by the NMPC to monitor the diversion and hawking of petrol is yielding results as those arrested have been charged to court. In a statement by the Group General Manager, Public Affairs Division of the Corporation, Undu Gamadu, indicates that one out of the seven has been granted bail while the rest are in Kefi prisons as the case is scheduled for the 22nd of March for further hearing. In his continued effort to improve power supply across the country, the federal government under its public-private partnership arrangement has commissioned an 85-kilowatt solar-powered hybrid mini-grid project at Gbamu community in Ijebu East local government area of Ogun State. Minister of State, Power, Works and Housing, Suleiman Hazan Zarma, says the federal government has intensified its power generation and distribution using locally available resources such as solar biomass and wind. Lekon Agbonde has the details. Bamu Bamu village, an agrarian community in a remote area of Ijebu East Local Council Development Area of Ogun State, has been in total darkness for over 25 years. A new lease of life has, however, come to over 300,000 people of the community, thanks to the federal and Ogun State governments that executed the electricity project in collaboration with the European Union and the German governments. Minister of State for Power, Works and Housing, Suleiman Azan Salma, noted that governments would continue to provide an enabling environment in form of policy and regulatory framework and basic infrastructure to achieve results. This project is another evidence that this administration is working closely with our development partners and the private sector to lay a solid foundation upon which our people, including including those in rural areas. State Governor Ibi Kunle Amosun and join the people of the community to take ownership of the project. Remote employment generation by enhancing and scaling up our micro, small and medium scale enterprises and to promote ultimately the value chain and reduce rural urban migration. Other benefiting states include Niger, Plato and Cross River. Lekon Agmode, NTA News. And now, for happenings in and around Lagos State, we join Ademola Adeoye. Hi there, Ademola. Hi, it's good to see you again, Ruth. Good evening, and thanks for joining us in Lagos. The House Committee on Banking and Finance has urged the Nigerian Security, Printing and Maintenance PLC to extend its operations to organizations in need of its services within and outside the country in order to boost the revenue generation, job creation, as well as conserve the nation's foreign exchange reserve. Amakawa reports that the committee made its recommendations during an oversight visit to the organization in Lagos. Chairman House Committee on Banking and Finance, Jones Onyere, said the Nigerian Security Printing and Minting PLC ought to venture into printing of international passports, 14 materials and sensitive documents for the West African Examination Council, WIEC. He said this expansion will boost the nation's economy. He emphasized the importance of collaborating with the Central Bank of Nigeria in ensuring proper handling of the Naira notes by Nigerians. We are worried that we have so many dirty notes in circulation. I know if we preach more to the people, if we educate them on how to handle notes, that means we have less of dirty notes in circulation. Other members of the committee deliberated on various issues of concern in the year ended 2017. You need to pay more attention to details. You need to protect your project, the output of what you're doing here. Because if you have public relations, which means you have to Nigerians, we'll know how to handle your notes effectively and it will be more valuable 
Responding to the lawmakers, Managing Director, Nigerian Security, Printing and Minting PLC, Joseph Ubo said the organization will prioritize capital projects in 2018. Now that we are comfortable, we can now face our capital projects. Plus, we also have the money to do it. Nigerian Security Printing and Minting PLC is solely responsible for printing Nigeria's currency, the Naira. In Lagos, Omaka O, NTA News. And now to business news. $2.5 billion euro bond proceed to reduce the nation's debt service to revenue ratio as stakeholders canvass for a separate interest rate mechanism for micro, small, and medium scale enterprises in order to aid the development of the sector. Let's join Abolade Salami for details on our business news segment. Good evening and thanks for joining us on the business news segment. The $2.5 billion euro bond proceed will reduce debt service to revenue ratio. According to a statement issued by the Debt Management Office, the proceed would go into refinancing of maturing domestic debt obligation of the federal government. DMO stressed that the purpose is to rebalance the federal government's debt portfolio by increasing the external component while reducing the domestic component. Nigeria emerges as the host country for the 2018 African Export Import Bank annual meeting has been considered as an avenue to explore development and provide economic solutions that will fast track the transformation of African economic through trade. As you may know, um, African countries have been trying to change the narratives from African countries between handouts to sustaining their economies through trade. I think if you give opportunity for Nigerians for the uh, guests and the participants to profess solutions to winning African countries of uh, um, dependence on grants and uh, handouts from the Western countries and to focus more on trade. For me, I, need, I know that trade is the most sustainable way to build economies. The significant role of MSMEs in the development of national economy cannot be underestimated. The huge contribution to the GDP growth constitutes a whole viral vehicle for the generation of a vast production of outputs and job creation. What we are thinking with the CBN is let there be a different interest regime. Let there be a different interest regime for MSMEs, that is for small and medium businesses. Let it be different from the large cooperatives and other businesses because these are the injury room for economic growth. SME everywhere worldwide is the backbone of, of every economy. And uh, by rating Nigerian SMEs, uh, that means you are giving them credibility in the eyes of the business world. And that, of course, will help uh, them in uh, growing uh, faster than they are growing now. Let's now take a quick look on how stocks were traded on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange today. Trading closed on a negative note on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange today, depreciating by 0.46% to close the All Share Index at 43,127.92 basis points, with a volume of shares which stood at 552 million, valued at 4.4 billion, which exchanged hands at 5,489 deals, with a market capitalization of 15.4 trillion naira. Unilever with one Naira 85 Cobo gain led the table, followed by Dango de Cement, which appreciated by one Naira 7 Cobo, while Nestle with 12 Naira 8 Cobo loss led the loser's table, followed by Zenith Bank, which depreciated by one Naira 1 Cobo per share. Stock market reports concludes business news segment. The news continues shortly. Please stay with us. Thank you, Abolade. You are still on to NTA Network News. We now take another break to bring you some messages. The news continues shortly. Stay with us. Yeah. You're back in Abuja, but we're moving right on to our Just Network studio, where Caleb is standing by. Thank you, Ruth, and welcome to Jobs. The Nigerian Communications Commission says it will continue to protect the interest of telecom consumers and all key players in the telecom business until the industry becomes safer and better through efficient service delivery. This came to fore during the 91st Consumer Outreach Program held in Mangu Plateau State. Ben Mitu has the details. 
The forum, which is an initiative of the Nigerian Communications Commission, seeks to, among other things, ensure that the telecom consumers are well protected, educated, and informed on their rights to quality services and choices. Director, Consumer Affairs Bureau of the NCC, Abdullahi Maikano, represented by the Deputy Director, Consumer Affairs Bureau, said one of the cardinal objectives of the Commission is to ensure the protection of consumers from exploitation and empower them to make rational and informed decisions. Besides serving as a proactive way of protecting consumers from making wrong choices, it serves as a preventive measure that protect consumers from being exploited and against fraud. Just at the event lauded NCC for the forum which they said will provide a platform for telecom consumers to ventilate their grievances with the hope of finding a solution. The NCC will also help us in the deductions anyhow. Why? Some are not maybe they will tell you is a beauty tip. Some will say relationship tips. There are some of these things that we don't need. And even if we need, allow us to request for it. The number of consumers are too many. And as a result of that, we discover that we don't have free flow of a communication. Personnel of some network operators were on hand to provide explanations to some of the salient issues raised. The event has as a theme information and education as a catalyst for consumer protection. In Joss, Ben, Me Too, NTA News. To ensure that health workers in rural areas carry out their duties efficiently, an affordable housing scheme undertaken by the Plateau State Government in collaboration with the Nigerian Union of Local Government Employees, NOLGI, and a private developer will soon come on stream in the state. The scheme targets medical and health workers across the 17 local government areas. Ndeyang and Ndeyang reports. The first phase of the scheme will be cited on 4,000 250 plots across Riom, just south, just east, Barrick in Ladi, and Basa local government areas. It includes construction of 250 apartments to be located in strategic parts of the local government areas. The project is intended to reduce rural urban migration. Appealing to His Excellency to implement the minimum wage for the local government staff so that to caution the effect of deduction. Signing this project with the state government is one way or the other. It's a little bit of humanitarian sort of project. Landowners and beneficiaries of the scheme applauded the state government and the union for the initiative. This project is a welcome development that will push those that are working at the lower level. Contractors are expected to mobilize to site by March this year. In Jaws, in Denyan, and the Abigang, NTA News. Ruth, it's back to you. Thank you from Jaws. And now, as the news continues, we'll go for a commercial break. Total team. Welcome back. President Muhammad Buhari has extended his best wishes to Team Nigeria as they begin their epoch-making representation of the country in the 2018 Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang, South Korea. He commended the women's bobsleigh team made up of Shin Wadigun, Ngozyong Umere, and Akwama Omeoga for making history, being the first African bobsleigh team to participate in the Winter Olympics in that category. President Buhari, while assuring the athletes that Nigeria stands with them in the competition, also salutes Nigerian Olympians Simidele Adiagbo, who has raised the bar as the first to compete in skeleton at the game. The president has approved the appointment of chef de mission to take care of the team and all those who made their participation in the game possible. The remains of Yusuf Buratai, father of Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tuka Yusuf Buratai,
has been committed to Mother Earth at the Guanje Cemetery in Meidogori, the Bornu state capital. There was a large turnout of sympathizers. Abu Bakr Mohammed Musa reports. The funeral prayer for late Al Haji Yusuf Burate was performed shortly after the Turaka Jumad prayer at Gaon Bina Friday Mosque with Borno State Governor Kashim Shatima in attendance, as well as members of the State Executive Council and traditional leaders, among other personalities. The corpse of the deceased was thereafter conveyed to Gwengi Graveyard, where he was laid to rest. While at the family residence of the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukur Yusuf Burate, special prayers were offered for God to grant the deceased eternal rest. The theater commander, Operation Lafia Doli, Major General Rogers Nicholas, alongside other top military and paramilitary officers serving in Bornu, also commiserated with the bereaved family. Meanwhile, a high-powered federal government delegation led by the National Security Advisor, General Babagana Mongunu, retired, and the Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Baba Abubakar, have condoled Nigeria's Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukur Yusuf Burate, over the demise of his father. Conveying President Muhammadu Buhari's heartfelt sympathy to the entire family and the people of Borno, General Babagana Munguno said the President has described the death of Al Haji of Burate as a monumental loss to Nigeria and urged the family to take solace in God. Al Haji of Burate died in the early hours of Friday in Meduguri at the age of 106 years after a brief illness. In Meduguri, Abu Bakr Muhammad Musa, NTA News. Meanwhile, President uh, Muhammadu Buhari has commiserated with the Buratai family over the death of their father, Yusuf Buratai. He was the father of the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tuko Buratai. A statement by the Special Advisor to the President, Media and Publicity, Femi Additional, says President Buhari joins to mourn the ex-serviceman and veteran of World War II, whose service to Nigeria will always be remembered. The president believes that the qualities of courage, patriotism, and devotion of the late Al Haji Yusuf Buratai have been rightly bequeathed to his son, who is diligently serving the country. He prays that the Almighty Allah comforts all who mourn the late patriot and grant his soul eternal rest. And so, <laughs> here comes the end of um, my stint here on newscasting on network news on this uh, 40, 40th anniversary of the station for me i had fun i hope you enjoyed reliving the times for now i say have a great year <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.